Good morning, Redlanders. You know, I don't know about you guys, but this quarantine has affected my memory and not in a good way. I mean, since every day is so similar, well, I confess there have been several days when I woke up and I didn't remember what day it was. Anybody else been there, done that these past 10 weeks or so? Another thing that messes with my memory is the fact that the things we used to do, we no longer do when we used to do them. For example, I preached the Sunday sermon on Friday, which really messes with my Sunday afternoon nap, I gotta tell you. I deliver my Wednesday morning devotional on Monday, Monday morning. I go to Sunday school on Saturday. Tuesday afternoon staff meeting is now Tuesday morning. I could go on, but I'm sure you know what I mean. I mean, has anyone else had memory issues during this quarantine? Can I get a show of hands? Thank you. Now I bring this up because, let's see, why, why did I bring this up? Oh yeah, yeah, I bring this up because today's devotional, which by the way, you won't see until the day after tomorrow, but is today if you're looking at it now, you know what I mean. Today's devotional is about a farmer with a memory deficiency, a foolish, forgetful, financially fit farmer. How's that for use, the use of F? Take your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 12 and follow along as I read verses 16 through 21. Jesus told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. Then Jesus said, but God said to him, you fool, this very night, your life will be demanded of you. Then you will get what you prepared for yourself. This is how it will be for anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich toward God. Now, if you backed up, you'll see that Jesus began this familiar story by saying this, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. So our Lord was using this familiar story to alert his listeners that day and us on this Wednesday about a very serious, dangerous sin, the sin of greed. And of course, greed is a dangerous thing, like covetousness, Greed is an invisible sin. You can't see it like you can theft or adultery. So if we're not careful, greed will sneak up on us before we see it coming. It will warp our values and our perceptions. I'm reminded of the story of a young man, another rich man who was driving his brand new Rolls Royce on a mountain road when he lost control and his car went over a cliff. The young man was thrown clear, but in the process, his left arm was completely severed. Uh, he stumbled to his feet. He stood at the top of the cliff and looked down at the burning wreck of his car and said, my rolls, my rolls. Well, the driver of another car saw the accident and, and stopped to help and heard him crying out and, and gently grabbed the man and said, sir, you're, you're in shock. Your arm has been severed. Sit down, let me help you. Well, the man looked down to see his arm was gone and he cried out, my Rolex, my Rolex. Well, we chuckle, or at least I'm assuming that you're chuckling on the other side of this screen. But the fact is greed is not a laughing matter. Greed can make us blind to what is truly important in life. Today's parable is usually called the parable of the rich fool, but you could also call it the farm that owned the fool. And I like that second title because Greed can twist our thinking like it did this Rolls Royce owner in this story. Twist our thinking such that our possessions possess us. Greed can warp our thinking and cause our ability to remember important truth to be greatly diminished. Okay, back to the parable. There's this farmer and he had enjoyed a run of unbroken prosperity. Understand this guy was wealthy before the story but then a surprisingly abundant harvest made him even more wealthy. In fact, he was so prosperous that his barns could not hold all his produce. So his solution was to tear down his old barns and build bigger new ones and then sit back and enjoy himself for many years to come. But God interrupted his plans by telling him that his soul would be, would be required of him that very night. Okay, where did this guy go wrong? I mean, how did this farmer's greed affect his memory? 
Well, first, it made him forget others. I mean, the rich fool's soliloquy in the parable there, it's absolutely packed full of the first person singular. He's always saying I, me, mine. You, you could say he had I trouble because for this guy, the purpose of having was self-indulgence. Surely there were needy people around him. I mean, Jesus said, the poor you will always have with you. And I'm sure those under-resourced neighbors would surely have been very thankful, very glad to share in his surplus harvest. But there's not a single word in this story about him even thinking about doing that. He forgot others. The great hymn writer, John Wesley, had a rule in life that went like this. Earn all you can, save all you can, give all you can. When he was at Oxford and he was only earning a measly 30 pounds a year, well, including the part he put in savings, he lived on 28 pounds and gave, the, gave two pounds away. But when his income increased to 60, 90, 120 pounds a year, he still lived on that 28 pounds and gave all the rest away. Well, this foolish farmer was not like Wesley, was he? No, in fact, he was just the opposite. I mean, Wesley's motto was get all you can and give all you can. This farmer's motto was get all you can and can all you get. Stock it away for your own future use. Get all the Purell and toilet paper in the county and hide it in your closet, you know, that kind of thing. Forget about sharing with others in need. Here's the second way this farmer's greed messed with his memory. He forgot that this world is temporary. He was so preoccupied with the things of this life that he forgot there's another life, an eternal one. Someone once wisely said, this world is a bridge. The wise man will pass over it, but will not build his house upon it. In other words, this world is just a preparatory stage to another world. And the person who forgets this, well, they are foolish because in doing so, they have forgotten that the main object of this temporary life is to prepare for eternity. This brings to mind the commercial that's been on recently about the woman who was decorating her hotel room as if it was her permanent home. Did you see that one? Well, we're just as foolish when we focus on the things of this world, forgetting that this world and all that is in it will soon pass away. With this story, Jesus was warning us that it's possible for us to become so preoccupied with the temporary things of this world that we forget the eternal. Wise people need to heed the warning in Proverbs 11:4, where it says, your riches won't help you on judgment day, only righteousness counts then. Here's a third way greed messed with this foolish farmer's memory. He forgot the source of real joy in life. His philosophy for, philosophy rather for happiness was to kick back and take it easy to eat and drink, thinking that would make him merry. The fact is real life, real joy in life, comes not when we hoard for ourselves, but when we give to others. It's just like the old saying, those who bring sunshine into the lives of others cannot keep it from their own lives. I don't know about you, but I have never known someone who was a truly giving person who did not also have a smile on their face pretty much all the time. Giving and joy, well, they seem to be a package deal. You know, years ago when I served on the staff of First Baptist Damascus, one of our members was a godly woman by the name of Shirley Shipley. Shirley always had a smile on her face, and, and you couldn't be around Shirley without feeling your own spirits lifted. The source of Shirley's joy was the fact that for decades, she ran a clothes closet in Damascus, right there near the old location of Tom and Ray's. Um, and that clothes closet, the purpose of it was to help the needy in the area. Shirley lived by the truth of Proverbs 19:17, which says, he or she who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and will be rewarded for what he or she has done. Helping others is hard and often thankless work, but Shirley did it for the Lord and found a joy that always left her with a smile a mile wide. Shirley remembered something this foolish farmer forgot. Eternal caliber joy is found in giving, not getting. Okay, I was going to mention one more way this memory of this farmer was messed with by his greed. Let's see, what was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He forgot God. This farmer didn't utter one single word about God in considering what to do with his bounty. No, remember he said, my fruits, my barns. 
which shows he forgot where all that came from. He forgot that his first Chronicles 29, 12 says, wealth and honor come from you, O God, you are the ruler of all things. This foolish farmer had dollars, but no sense because he disregarded the almighty. In his abundance, he forgot the source, capital S, of every good and perfect gift. You may remember that back in 1863, to help our nation avoid this mistake, Abraham Lincoln designated April 30th as a day of national humiliation, fasting, and prayer. Here's what he said. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become far too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace. Too proud to pray to the God who made us. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no nation has grown, but we have forgotten God, end quote. Well, we need to heed Lincoln's words because if we're not careful, we'll become just as forgetful as this, as this fool. We must remember that as Proverbs 3 says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. In short, we must remember God when it comes to our material possessions. And the way we do that is by tithing, giving a portion of our money to further his kingdom. You see, when we bring our gifts to God, when we give to our local church, whether it's through online giving or mailing in our checks or dropping them through the slot in the office door, as so many of you Redlanders have been faithful to do, when we do that, we're acknowledging the fact that we know we remember that all we have is from God. We remind ourselves that it is He who constantly provides us with all. You know, I remember the words to an old poem goes like this. Give to the needy sweet charity's bread, for giving is living, the angel said. And must I be giving again and again, my peevish, petulant answer ran? Oh no, said the angel, piercing me through. Just give till the master stops giving to you. God is the source of every blessing we have. And it's, it is foolish not to acknowledge him by giving back a portion of our income to our local church. So in this little story, Jesus taught a good memory is very important when it comes to dealing with material possessions. This parable reminds us that it's vital that we not allow greed to make us absent-minded. We must remember the needs of others. We must remember that giving instead of hoarding can bring us great joy. We must also remember our lives here are, are really very brief. So time spent preparing for eternity is certainly time well spent. And we must remember to include God in our plans. We must give him praise for all we have by returning to him a portion of our income. Okay, I'll see you tonight at our midweek prayer chat. And let's see, what's the devotional for tomorrow? I hope I can remember. Right, it's Peggy's time. And Peggy's leading us in a study of the parable of the sower. Love you guys.